All righty, here we are. Me and Alyssa, Alyssa and I coming to you from room 609. She's got a, you got a bug in your scalp, Alyssa. All right. So, so today's lesson is uh, on persuasion. So this is true, guys. Next, next week, you guys are going to write a persuasive essay, which is why we're going to practice this stuff today. Okay, you're going to write a persuasive essay. Now look, in general, we need to talk about tricks of persuasion. Tricks of persuasion. This is real life stuff here. This ain't just for an essay, which it will benefit you on the essay, but I'm actually going to give you some, some tricks right now to help you win arguments. Okay? Let's say you and your sibling are throwing a ball in the house. And you know you're not supposed to throw a ball in the house, but you're throwing the ball in the house, you hit your mom's lamp, you break the lamp. Who has the advantage of not getting in trouble? The person who tells the mom first what happened or the person who tells the mom second what happened? The person who goes first has the advantage because what you're going to try and do, if you have not figured this out, when you go first, you are trying to get that person to believe you so strongly that he or she will not listen to the next person. You know what I'm talking about? Or maybe they'll listen, they'll hear what they're going to say, but they've already made their mind up. They can't be convinced otherwise. So the person who goes first has the advantage. That's just something you guys need to know for real life. Okay? Now, when you're, let's say you're, you know, you're, you're going on a job interview and you're trying to convince this person to hire you. Okay? Should you give them your strongest reasons first? Or should you start with your weakest and get stronger? What do you do there? Strongest. What? Strongest. You start with your strongest reasons. If you start with your weakest reasons, they might find them so uninteresting that you lose their attention. You understand? So you always go first if you get the opportunity in a persuasion deal. And you always start with your strongest reason. And then after that is your second strongest reason. And then after that, your third strongest reason. You always start strongest. All right? Obviously, you hope that you can maintain strength throughout. But just in case you can't, you always start with what you believe to be your best reason. Now, let's look up here. This is something. Here's my coffee. This is something that um, you guys are going to have to look at it from another angle. <clears throat> Recently, numerous articles have been published stating that people under the age of 18 have no business having a personal cell phone. In fact, local churches have begun to get involved as they believe phones to be bad for young teens and children. As an 8th grade student, you are of the same opinion. People under the age of 18 should not have their own phones. List reasons to support your belief. Now look, first, I realize that y'all do not agree with this. That you actually think that y'all should have phones. That's why you have phones. I personally think y'all should have phones. I'm cool with it. I don't particularly care, to be honest. It ain't my business. But in this instance, you're going to have to give the opposite of what you believe. You're going to have to side with the enemy. You're going to have to give reasons why people under the age of 18 should not have phones. Understand? All right. Now, what I want y'all to do right now, I'm going to give you about 60 seconds. All you're going to do is give me one reason why, why people under the age of 18 should not have phones. Now, look, I'm giving you 60 seconds. So I want you to really think about it. Come up with something good. 60 seconds, go. One reason why people under the age of 18 should not have their own personal cell phone. There were some good ones first period that I didn't even think of. Really good ones.
About 15 seconds. That's good. Well, let's come up with a few of these. I'm going to have to write them over here. Just, just hold this up for me, Micaiah. Sorry, you're going to have to face it that way. Kind of point it this way, babe. Thank you. I really appreciate your help. So, well, since, since you're doing the phone stuff, this is Micaiah with the thing here. Micaiah, give me your reason, baby. Give me your one reason why people under the age of 18 should not have phones. Because people can send inappropriate things to each other. That's, that's actually a good reason. So, reason number one. Inappropriate, can I say messages? Yes. Okay. So inappropriate messages. That never happens, does it? Nope. No. <laughs> okay. Give me one. Um, they can talk to strangers. Talk to strangers through the internet. Yes. I'm going to call those people who talk to strangers... Like those, those, those strangers, I'm going to call those people who are strangers who talk to kids on the internet, those are called predators, okay? Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to put the word predator up here, or predators. Also scammers. Yeah, I had someone do Oh, that. I'll put that, predators slash scammers. I had someone text me on Instagram. All right, yeah, those people were <laughs> but I didn't lack of perverts. It. Okay, you, 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 and you in that order, go. They're going to become addicted. Uh... Addiction to electronics? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Hey, some of that stuff is addicting. I'm sorry. TikTok, man. TikTok, <laughs> I can get on that. You know, I, I'm just taking two minutes. I want to look at something on TikTok. And the next thing I know, it's 27 minutes later. And I'm still sitting on the toilet looking at TikTok. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've done that. Come on. Uh, there are like 12 hands that are up. Okay, that's what I said. <laughs> Alyssa, put both hands up. Uh, all right. Bri Brianne, go, babe. They're open to more I'm sorry, baby? They're open to more content. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Explicit, explicit content. And that could be, that could be music. That could be um, inappropriate pictures. It could even be like, I mean, directions on how to build a bomb. Uh <laughs> TikTok challenges, all that stuff, I would consider explicit, inappropriate content. You're sitting there shaking the phone. <laughs> You're doing a really good job, though. Okay, who was the, who was the, my Lily, go, baby. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to put social media in general. No, look, it does have its advantages. I like seeing my friends from high school and college and see their kids grow up. It's fun. I ain't going to lie. It's cool. Um, seeing former students, I like that. But that doesn't mean that it can't be draining. And then obviously, first period mentioned this. It does, this isn't an adult, this is not an adult problem, really. But it's certainly a kid problem. That would be cyberbullying. You know what I'm talking about? So, and that, that is really draining with social media. I, I've never been cyberbullied. Have you, Misty? No, I haven't. I think, I mean, I'm sure an adult has sometime, but that's a kid problem. It's a real problem. I'm not. I'm not saying it ain't real. It's real. Constance. Um, drama and cyberbullying could affect people that have like depression later in life, like permanent depression. I think that I'm just gonna put drama by social social media. Cyberbullying. Well, I'm gonna put one that I'm that I'm that, that I can't believe. Oh, Alyssa, go, babe. Phones distract kids in academics, causing failure. Yeah. Look, dudes. Dis distractions distractions look guys if you wake up at night and you just want to check the time my god do not look at the phone on your clock but if you got a message you know you're opening that thing and you ain't getting back to bed we know this is true all right i'm gonna put another one i'm gonna put this one i'm gonna put cheating okay and i don't mean i don't mean cheating on your 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 significant other hopefully y'all don't do that but but look, Kennedy. Look, dudes, we all know that people cheat on assignments and cheat on tests. Okay, that's that's part of life. There's no way to ever stop that. But it sure does. This little thing that she's holding right here sure makes it much easier, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Yep. Okay. Back in our day, we had to remember the answers real quick and write them down during break or class change. You can and do pass it. them to our friend the next period. You kids got to just take a picture. Okay. Okay. So those are our reasons. Now, I'm going to put this back here. Actually, hold, hold this back for me, Micaiah. You did such a good job. What we're going to do, guys, let's take a look at this. You guys are going to get one vote on what you believe to be the strongest. Matter of fact, I'm going to change that. I'll let y'all vote twice. First period I did once. I'm going to see how it works with two votes. You get two votes. So you need to pick the two strongest reasons why teenagers under the age of 18 should not have personal phones. The two strongest reasons. These are our reasons. Inappropriate messages. That could be IMing, DMing, sliding into my DMs, snapping, chatting, chat snapping, texting, uh, whatever y'all do. Well, it's got to be a message. So inappropriate messages, predators and scammers, addiction to electronics, explicit content, Social media, this is just the drama and the cyberbullying that can happen on social media. It being a general distraction. And then cheating, which none of y'all seemed particularly caring about. All right, so look, you get two votes. Choose your two right here in your head because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count them up. You got your two? You figured them out? Okay. What you believe are the two reasons. We good? Who says inappropriate messages is one of my two? Inappropriate messages. Only one person? I agree with you, Jeremy. But only one. Okay. I, I, I like that one. Who all votes for predators and scammers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Addiction to electronics. I thought that was pretty strong. Truthfully, none of these are bad. You know what I mean? They're all good. Any of these are good. That's the good thing about them. Explicit content. Oh, my goodness. That lets me know what you people look at. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They're all like, done that. Okay? Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy. I didn't hear you, and I don't want to hear you. Do not repeat it, and I hope it ain't on this video. <laughs> Look, do not, I don't know what was just said. No one tell me. I'm just living my life. All right. All right. Social, social media. Just the, the drama that comes with it. Anybody? One. Thank you. Constance, that was your idea? You vote for your own thing? Oh, I didn't vote for mine either. Just it's a general distraction in life. One, two, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Ten. And then cheating. You people. <laughs> Boom. Okay. All right. So this is what we're going to do, guys. And we're not going to write an essay. But if we were, you know, if this were your topic, the first thing you have to do is understand the topic. Okay, I have to basically make an argument against what I believe. I believe that people should be able to have phones, but in this case i got to state the opposite. Everybody did that. Y'all understood the topic. That's good. That's the first thing that has to be done. The second thing is you've got to list things. And then you figure out the ones that are most important. All right? Just like I told you a second ago, if you're trying to convince someone of something, start with your strongest argument, with, your, with you know, whatever it is. If you're trying to convince someone to hire you, you need to start with your best quality, whatever that may be. I'm always on time. That's important. All right? You always start with your best quality. So, if we were to do it, we would list this one first. We would list explicit content second. And we would list distractions third. Those would be our three reasons. We'd list them in that order. Okay? So y'all did well in this. I, I, I first period actually did well, but y'all did even better. So good job. Now, let me have this computer back. We're going to do one more, and then we'll be done with this. One more now that y'all kind of understand what we're going to do here. When school was created, uh-oh, it was done so with a focus on the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now, the first period, they didn't know what arithmetic is. What's arithmetic? Um, math. Math. Oh. 
When school was created, it was done so with a focus on the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Needless to say, times have changed. Modern schools still focus on the so-called three R's, but they also focus on numerous social, extracurricular, musical, and athletic areas. Maintaining such an array of non-academic activities has become an expense that many people have begun have begun to resent. What's it mean to resent something? Uh, to deny. Like... To means to dislike something. Yeah. For that reason, legislators are considering eliminating such programs in order to lower the tax rates of constituents. As a student, list three arguments stating your belief on this issue. So this one, I didn't tell you what you had to choose. The last one I told you. This one, you get to make your own choice. Do you think extracurricular activities, that could be band, choir, any sport, student council, whatever, you know, they got a cooking club at the high school, all that stuff. Do you think that should be eliminated and we should just have reading, writing, and math? No. Okay? No. Yeah, you don't. You don't then. Fine. Then I need you all right now to list me reasons why we should not eliminate those things. Why we should not. I'm going to give you about two minutes. And don't write, like I had a period, a person last period write the same thing over. He wrote it three times. Don't give me one of these answers. I like pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni is good on my pizza. Pizza and pepperoni go good together. I mean, it was something like that. I'm not going to tell you who it was. Caleb Crabtree. So, does it surprise you? I like no. Caleb. Please do not list this. It was, it was like, they're fun. Uh, they give us something fun to do. And we don't be bored. Like, it's the same answer. You know what I'm saying? So write me three, three different, at least three different ones. You can do more of it. And we're going to write some of these down. Now, one more minute. Will you do this for me again, sweetie? I, I really appreciate it. Kennedy. Now listen, how many reasons did you write, Kennedy? You wrote two? Give me the one that you believe to be stronger. Um, it can give, it can give you opportunities to get a scholarship in That's great. One, scholarship opportunities. And that can be for sports, but it can also be for band. It can be, look, I know this. If you are in... The cooking class at that high school for two years, you get an automatic scholarship to Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Automatic. I mean, you have to pass, but if you pass, which you do, your brother has it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a great reason. Scholarship opportunities. We didn't even think of that in first period. Yeah. Okay, that's a strong reason. Very good. Somebody, give me another one. Yes, Bree. It gets children to communicate with other children. Social interaction. That's a good one. Social interaction is good. Social interaction is important. Okay? Social interaction. Very nice. Uh, it's, we're going to Alyssa, the great Randini, and then River, and then Constance. Alyssa. Ideas for future lifelong careers. Ah, career ideas. Very good. 
Remember, I keep bringing up the cooking class. You might get in the cooking class and then decide, I wouldn't mind being a chef. I wouldn't mind opening a restaurant. They have um, classes at the Votech for teaching. It's called Teacher Academy. You might not be interested in being a teacher. Then you take that class. And, oh, this is pretty good, right? So you might you might be on the football team and think I'm I'm really not good enough to play college football or professional football, but I could be a coach. So those those would be reasons. Career ideas. Good, Randy. So you just have like practice or experience. Just to have. Just to have different experiences, absolutely. And not to, you know, that can be, by the way, job preparation, right? You know, absolutely. Very good, Randy. River. You can learn from it. We'll just put learning opportunities. Let's be a little more specific with our rest of them. All right. Constance, what you got, baby? Like extracurricular activities like give kids a time to unwind from like actual school. Oh, that is a good one. Unwinding time. Absolutely. Dudes, those of you that are like, like you're playing on the baseball team, right, River? Aren't you so excited to go to practice? You know what I mean? Maybe at the end of the year you're a little tired of it, but certainly when you start your season, you're so dang excited. You know what I mean? You're carrying your books around, or I mean, you're carrying your... You back bag around, you're ready to go, right? That's like something kids look forward to like at the end of the day, like all day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, somebody else give me one. Let's do a few more. Bree. Uh-huh, I agree. Because you can meet people who are like-minded, right? So, you know, let's say you wanna, you're interested in drama. That's not something I'm interested in. But you could meet people that, that would be your friends because they're interested in a similar you know, area of study. Let's do two more, at least two more. I'll give y'all one. Don't you think that extracurricular activities somewhat keep people out of trouble? Oh, yeah. Not 100%, but oftentimes, right? For two reasons. Number one, if you, you might have another group of friends that's over getting in trouble, but you're at football practice, so therefore you could not participate. Number two, maybe you could have participated, but you don't want to be kicked off the football team. You know what I mean? So even if you didn't have anything to do that night, you chose to stay home and watch TV because you don't want to be kicked off the football team. So, so I'm not saying it 100% keeps people out of trouble, but it helps. So that would be one. Somebody give me one more. Bree's hot on this. Go, Bree. Boom, boom, it does. I'm going to put that over here. Nine. Um, encourages good grades. Dudes, if you don't make the grades, you don't make the team. And it's as simple as that. Okay? As simple as that. All right. So keep that there, please, sweetie. So let's take a look at these. Scholarship opportunity. So we're, by the way, y'all are all, is there anybody who says we need to cut all this junk out? Nobody? Good. Scholarship opportunities, that's a strong reason, huh? Mm -hmm. Social interaction, career ideas, experience, learning opportunities, unwinding time, safe space, keeps children out of trouble, encourages good grades. Okay. Now keep in mind, you have to convince taxpayers. That's your, that's your person. They're the ones who are wanting to do away with this so that they can save, say, 500 bucks a year. You have to convince them to keep paying the $500. You have to convince an adult, 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 year old, 50 year old, 60 year old, whatever. You have to convince an adult that he or she should continue paying taxes so that you can have fun things at school. All right? Now, take a look. I want you to consider which, which of these would be the best to convince an adult. We could actually start by eliminating things. Give me a bad answer. You know that there's no way an adult's going to go along with this. Some adult you don't know. Your mom and dad might go along with it, but Mr. Smith down the road does not care about you. 
Tell me a bad reason that we have up here, or at least maybe not a bad one, but the weakest on the board. What you got, Anthony? That might be, they might say, I don't care if the kids play together. That, they might do that. I, I actually, as a teacher, am very much in favor of social interaction. I'm in, I'm in favor of that as a human being, actually. But um, Let's scratch that one out. I think you're probably right. Give me another one, you. Unwinding time. They probably do not care if you're unwinding. Give me another weak one that, that we would not use. Count Constance. You grades? I don't know. I think I think adults want you to make good grades. We might not use it. I don't know, but we're not going to get rid of that right now. Yeah. Probably. Um, pr even though I think that's a good one, it it probably would not make our top three. We've got learning. We got scholarship opportunities, career ideas. Experiences for job preparation. Now look, I think we can probably combine these two. Can we do that? Can we combine these two? Yeah. So three and four, we're going to make that's one thing. Career ideas slash job preparation. All right, it's going to be. Uh, you could take eight out. You think take out eight keeps people out of trouble? Yeah, some parents, some parents don't really care. Well, this isn't just about general parents. Uh, it's about any adult. It, I. I I'll be real. I would take this one out, too. I just don't know if your friends will agree with us. Let's leave it here for now. Let's do this. What's the strongest reason to convince people the that they... Yeah. Scholarship opportunities? Yes. Because yeah. you can get That, might, that might be true. So we'll, I'm going to put the letter A by it. That means it wins first place. I can't put the one because I've already got a one by it. What would be the second strongest reason? Um, nine. No, e no, it's a B three and four. Probably these. And this then this This last. is probably C. All right, my point is this. Next week, when you write... Thank you very much, Micaiah. Next week, when you write your persuasive essay, this is what you have to go through. And sometimes you get down to they're pretty close. So, Mr. Richmond, I don't know. Number, number six and number seven both are even to me then what you got to do is you got to say, which one can you better defend? Which one can you relate to more? You understand? That's how you choose at that point. All right. Before I turn this question, this video off, are there any questions or comments or expostulations? No, sir. Thank you, Jeremy. We're good? All right.